Hi there, and welcome to my second video in this series on ADS thermal simulations. This video will be a demo of the ADS thermal floor planner. And if you're not sure what the floor planner is, I recommend that you go back and watch my first video in this series. So let's start by creating a new workspace. And I will change the library. And I will add the demo kit PDK, which is a fictitious gas PDK that ships with ADS. And I will set up the layout technology immediately and create the workspace. I will be using the demo kits built in technology and I'll copy the technology into my local library instead of just referencing it. And so you can see several substrates have been copied into my library, including a thermal substrate. So I'll open up the thermal substrate. And here we can note that there are several different substrate layers, including gas and silicon nitride. There are also several uh, conductor layers and via layers. And there's also several heat layers. And these heat layers have a process role of heat source. This substrate uh, is the, uh, or the substrate editor, is the same uh, substrate editor that you would use if you're setting up EM simulations. But the only difference here is you have to take one additional step when you're doing thermal simulations, and that is you need to go to File, Export, Thermal Tech Files. And it exports three thermal tech files into a directory, and you point to those in, in order to run thermal simulations. So let me close the substrate editor now that you know what the substrate looks like and I'll create a new blank layout. And in this layout, I will set up a floor planner simulation by going to the tools menu. And in the tools menu, you'll see the floor planner menu down here. So I'll go to the floor planner setup. And the first thing I'll have to do is point to a thermal tech file. So if I browse here, you can see there's several tech files here included in the thermal directory of the PDK. Um, and remember, I, I mentioned that the substrate editor has the capability of exporting these thermal tech files for you. So I'll point to this tech.tcl. And unfortunately, there's a slight bug here where these buttons remain grayed out. So I need to hit OK and then return to the menu. And you can see now these buttons are activated. And so now I can proceed and uh, set the boundary conditions, the ambient temperature, and the meshing. And that's all here in this menu. Uh, this user interface allows you to set the top and the bottom face thermal resistances. If you need to do anything else with regards to the boundary conditions, you can do more in this package.ini file. It's more flexible when you set it up that way, including uh, you know controls over the side boundaries, not just the top and the bottom boundaries. But we're going to go ahead and just leave everything as is. I'll leave the ambient temperature as 25 degrees C, and I'll just leave the meshing at the defaults and I'll go ahead and add a heat source. And so uh, this heat source dialog box allows me to create single heat sources or arrays of heat sources. And it gives me the opp opportunity to name the heat source if I'd like. And you can also give it a device name if you'd like. And it'll, it allows you to define either power dissipations or you can define current and voltage. So I'll just leave it as power. And if it's an array, uh, the power will get automatically split evenly between the array elements. And here the uh, heat source layers, the heat layers are, uh, are shown here in the dropdown box. And I'll pick the heat mesa layer as the layer on which to draw these heat sources. 
And then you can see here I can set the widths and the lengths and the pitch and the number of columns and rows of all these arrays. I'll just leave everything as default for now and place an array here in the layout. And I'll hit Escape and zoom in. And if I zoom in, you can see it, it has my name that I gave it. And if I zoom in even further, you can see this is the device name is Q1. And then it's got um, the amount of power in that array element. So remember, it's split it evenly. So it's splitting two watts evenly between these elements. So we're ready to simulate. So I'll go ahead and hit solve for temperature. And when I solve for temperatures, the thermal viewer automatically pops up. And you can see that the Thermal Solver put the boundary conditions for the sides right at the outer extents of the heat source, heat sources. And this is not what you typically want, right? But I just wanted to show this to illustrate um, how the boundary conditions are set. So if you want uh, the boundary conditions to be in a certain location, you, you need to make sure that there is some kind of geometry drawn on the outer extents of the chip. So let's go let's go back and do that real quick. So I'll close this and in the layout here, let me close this and in the layout, I'll just draw some dummy metal on the M1 layer here. I'll just put it off to the side here. Just draw a couple quick rectangles and let's re-simulate that. So I can simulate right from here. If I do solve from temperatures, it will lock up ADS during the solve but it'll automatically pop up the thermal viewer. If I do solve for temperature and background, what it does is it will uh, not lock up ADS, but it will also not open up the 3D thermal viewer by default. Let's go ahead and do the background just so I can show you how to open up the thermal viewer manually. So as you can see, this window pops up, but I can continue working in ADS while that's solving. And then what I can do once it's done once I confirm it's done, I can go into the window and open Thermal Viewer. And you'll see some intermediate results here typically. And what you typically want is the, the plain name one, not the one with the dot one or underscore ridge. You want the, the plain one. It's typically what you want. And then here's the results with the boundary conditions spread out more. And, um, and so let me just show you a couple of things about the thermal viewer before I move on. So uh, this Z slider here goes up and down through the chip in the Z dimension. And as I move the, sl the slider, it updates this plot and it also uh, updates, um, well, actually, no, the, the, the range is staying the same, actually. Uh, so it's just updating the plots. And I can use my mouse uh, wheel to also do the same thing if you'd like. And, um, and if I click around with my left mouse, you can see it's giving out temperature readings down here as well. And uh, you can do other things with your mouse as well, not just click around and see temperatures. So you can actually see there's different mouse behaviors that you can set. One of them is rotate model. So I can, if I put it into rotate model mode. Now the mouse, instead of giving me the temperature, I can, I can rotate around. And now when I do the Z dimension, uh, the Z slice slider, you can see uh, more clearly what we're doing. And there's also uh, these cut planes that I can enable as well, which can be useful to see what's going on in the middle of the chip. And, um, and by default, the, uh, all of these Z slices are shown in this viewer as having the same dimensions, which is not really the case. In, in, in reality, the, the gas is much thicker than the silicon nitride. And uh, this is kind of not reflecting that. So if you want to reflect that, you can actually set up in the display, instead of layers equal in Z, you can set it up to be the true layer thickness. And now it's all the true Z dimension thicknesses are reflected as I'm sc scrolling up and down through this. And here's another Z cut here. 
so let's let's add some more stuff to the uh, layout and uh, re-simulate. So let me close the viewer for now, and I will add another heat source. And this time I will add just a single heat source that represents a resistor, let's say, for argument's sake. So I'll call it res, and the device name is R1. I'll give it you know, 0.5 watts, let's say, and I'll put it on the heat nichrome layer. And now it's just, uh, you know, one row, one column. I can control the, the, the widths and the lengths. So let's just give it a, a different width just for argument's sake. And let me go ahead and place this. So here's the really long resistor. And let's go ahead and if I zoom in, you can see it's set to five, uh, 0.5 watts. So let's go ahead and simulate that now. So I'll go to Tools, Thermal Floor Planner, Solve for Temperatures. So that will open up the viewer automatically for me, but ADS is locked up while I wait. And so here's the new results. And, and, and this time uh, we're looking at the slice in the nichrome uh, slice. If I go down, this is in the in the Mesa slice, uh, in the transistor Mesa slice. Um, I can also change the this this range so that it updates as I'm scrolling through these slices. In fact, let me add one more device to to illustrate why that might be useful. So let me close this, and I'll add. And this time I'll add a, a via from the PDK instead of. Uh, just uh, uh, adding, um, you know, a heat source. I'll I'll I'll, I'll just put in a, a via, and hopefully this will illustrate something interesting. And I'll also add um, some metalization and just put it just randomly over this heat mesa layer, just to give some more metalization uh, to look at here. And let's run that. So now we added a few different things here that are uh, hopefully interesting once this simulates. So here we go. So as you can see, the first interesting thing to note is these fingers are a bit cooler than these because the metal over those fingers is helping spread the heat away, right? So that's expected. That's pretty cool. Um, let's go down and see if we can see the via at all. And no, I can't really see the effects of the via, but the trick I mentioned before that I'm gonna show you now, which might let us see it, is if I go into the display and instead of setting the range to, to be uh, the complete range, uh, if you do the slice range, that can be more helpful. So as I move the slider through, the range changes so that it's um, calibrated, if you will, to be um, the, the, the maximum and the minimum uh, correspond to the maximum and the minimum in that particular slice. So if I go down all the way to the bottom, I'm hoping I can see the via here. Yeah, you see that? You can barely see the via here. Um, so that's kind of interesting. And I wouldn't be able to see this via if I had the full scale range on. It, you know, the, the differences aren't enough to see. So that's uh, that's interesting. Let's add one more thing to the layout. Let's add a FET from the PDK. And I'll put this uh, over here. And there's something important I want to illustrate about this. So let me move this, this dummy rectangle over here um, out of the way, right? Oops. <laughs> Oops. Let me close that. All right, uh, let me just run this because I want to illustrate a couple things here about this. Um, there we go. All right, thermal floor planner, solve for temperatures. This is a warning, and, and I was expecting this warning, and I wanted to show you this warning. So it's warning me that there's no power values assigned to that FET. And this is expected when you're running the floor planner if you put in a FET model or some model that has its own heat sources, 
you'll get this warning that says, hey, uh, there's no powers assigned to these heat sources, so there will be no, uh, you know, we're not going to include that, that heat source in the simulation. That's what I expected. So if I hit OK, um, you can see that this, uh, this transistor has no power dissipation, and so it's not generating heat at all. However, what you can do, if, you're, if you want to use your FET layouts in the floor planner mode, what you can actually do is you can look at the FET's um, heat sources, and you can draw your own heat sources right on top of it. So let me try to pull that off real quick. So if I uh, look at the layers, and if I turn off the visibility for all the layers except for the heat mesa layer, this is uh, the FETS heat sources right here, right? So if I wanted to actually, let me turn that off too. So these are the FETS heat sources, and there's no power dissipations assigned to them. But what I could do is go to Tools, uh, Add Heat Source, and I could create an array of two um, heat sources. I could measure these heat sources, assign the power dissipations to them, and put them right on top of the FETS heat sources. And then I would include the FETS uh, heat generation as well as all the FETS metallization, right? That, as we saw earlier, the metallization will serve to spread the heat around. So uh, by doing this kind of process, you can actually you know, solve on a complete layout in the floor planner, right? Without any schematic link at all. You just have to manually assign the power dissipations. So without measuring all this and, all, and doing all that, hopefully that's all clear to you now. And uh, I think that's going to wrap up my video for now. So uh, stay tuned for more videos in the future. Uh, my next one will be on electrothermal co-simulation with circuit simulations. Okay, thanks. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.